guest in the house here. It's uh, Jamie Jordan, fabricator. You guys all know him, probably. Uh, How you doing? He's uh, with Mittler Brothers and uh, Handmade Seat Company, and uh, of fame on uh, many DVDs and, and TV shows. You've seen him around, and today he's here to uh, give some tips and demos on bead rolling. And uh, uh, Jamie, good to have you here. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for letting me come, I, I appreciate you, it. You bought some of your, uh, your yep. handy work here. Yeah, we have one of our basic seats just kind of laid out here. Doesn't have a lot of artwork on it yet, but it's just one of our basic kind of put it together seats that we do. Um, we have that and we, we brought a Summit logo just to kind of show you guys really what the machine can do and really just kind of bring it home with the Summit team. And then we have a few different other art pieces that we brought just to try to show off a little bit and kind of show what the capabilities of the machine actually can do and you know full, full examples of artwork that can be created just with a few dies and just one of these machines. Jamie, talk a little bit about how you got into uh, fabricating, uh, self-taught or, or how, how did that come about? A, a good bit of self-taught but I went to WyoTech back in the day. Back when I was younger I got out of school, I went to WyoTech, I did that for nine months and I went to Tulsa Welding School and I was a welder and a fabricator for many, many years. And I did that all the way up until 09, and then in 09 I decided to start my own business, and it was directly related to just building seats and doing artwork later on as it came. And then I was fortunate enough to be able to connect with Mittler Brothers later on. Okay, talk a little bit about that relationship with Mittler Brothers. How did that come about? It came about for me just doing artwork. I was actually using the machine a lot to actually do the, do the seats, and I realized I needed to make my own rolls and kind of start figuring out a few different things to actually help me be able to create what I wanted to create. And I started doing that a good bit, and I was recognized by Mittler Brothers. They actually, they liked what I was doing. They offered me a chance to come out to SEMA and actually do a demo and kind of talk and do what we're doing here. And I was fortunate enough to be able to go. And after that, I was able to kind of build a relationship with them, actually creating products. And now we have right around 80 products sold with Mittler Brothers all around the world now. So your name's obviously on the product itself, Jamie George's Signature Series. What does it take? Uh, uh, what, what does a bead roller need to have in order for you to sort of endorse it, so to speak? Yeah, it was one of those machines. This one is American made. It's right there in Wright City, Missouri. Uh, it also had uh, my machines. They all kind of have different motors. They have a few different features, but my machines actually really have all the neat features that actually cause you to be able to do some of this work. Uh, this machine has a 16 gauge motor. It's got a variable speed on the pedal as well as in the motor here, forward reverse on and off. It also had this machine has a table that can pull one pin. It falls down and gets out of the way actually allows you to be able to create a lot of really intricate work and in keeping everything nice and flat and letting those rolls do exactly what they're supposed to do. Another feature of my machines is going to be this adjustable collar at the end. For many years you only had the, the vertical adjustment here, up and down, up and down. So when I started doing bead rolling I started thinking not only vertically but horizontally. So what I want to do here is by opening up this gap and clo closing this gap I can create any bead profile that I want just by keeping pretty much the same rolls on there all day. Okay. And obviously, like we said, you're here to give uh, tips and demos to customers, sure. even uh, give them some hands-on experience if they want. Uh, what, what are some tips that you can uh, provide? I know you have your DVD series where you can get lots and lots of those tips, but what are three, two or three main things you start with? One of the biggest tips I can give anyone is understanding exactly how this top staff works and kind of looking at this as a clock right here. So I'm thinking 12, 6, 12, 6. So every one of these machines are going to have a part where they're going to make contact. So instead of just jumping on this machine and just running this up and running this down, I want you to think about it stopped at 12 right here. Your machine might stop at a different place, but kind of coordinate it like that. So every time you go to do something, you kind of can work between the 12 or the 6. So that way you know how many revolutions you go around, and you can kind of get used to just staying in that mode every time. Because doing, the biggest part about bead rolling isn't going deep and isn't going wide. It's just keeping consistent pressure and working with the metal that way. Okay. Uh, how does the... Uh, gauge of the steel come into play? I mean, obviously that probably comes into play when you're choosing your machine a little bit. Sure, but. sure. Uh, when you're choosing the machine, uh, Mittler offers a few different machines, a few different options with that. This machine's rated at 16 gauge. We also have a 19 gauge motor. Uh, this is gonna be rated at cold roll steel 16 gauge for this one. And the metal that we're working with today is 063-3003. And that's gonna be able to be thick enough to hold the actual work in the panel, but not be thin enough to where it'll cause it to warp up and kind of act up as you go in. Okay. And uh, what are you working on here today? I noticed you have we're something. Here. Yeah, we're just doing a simple little design yeah, right. here today, just actually keeping these same rolls on there today mm -hmm. and actually being able to raise and lower and kind of show a few different features of the machine in its capabilities by being able to turn it down and be able to make these really sharp turns, as well as being able to feather in and feather out with your pressure as you're working that dial. Okay. 
you know, I think you know, fabricating it intimidates a lot of people. Uh, you know, I think it scares them away, especially on a machine like this. Sure. Well, what's, what's your advice for starting out exactly? I look at bead rolling just like I look at welding. It's, it's going to take patience. The only way to learn how to bead roll is to bead roll. The only way to know how to weld is to weld. That's kind of the way I look at it. And it's patience. It's understanding a little bit of how these dies work, creating your actual profile, and just kind of taking your time and not rushing through it. That's one of the biggest things I can tell anyone. Don't get in a hurry. Don't get nervous. Just kind of think about what you're doing. Look at your dies. Figure out your pressures. Figure out what you're doing, going to do. And just start doing it consecutively every day. Just trying to work on those same things, those same values. And don't try to change everything up. You know, Just kind of find a nice little niche that you're comfortable with. If you feel comfortable with the machine, trying to just stay with that and just work with that. And the, the other thing I always recommend is two dies. Two dies to start with. That's one of the main things that you want to do is figure out what dies you want at, at the beginning. And those dies, for me, I always recommend would be like a quarter inch step and a three-eighths bead. Those dies will be able to get you started with pretty much doing anything you want to do with a bead.